Vishwa, it's an online platform. An online platform for social channels, for change makers, everyday change makers that we see around us, who have put decades of work of their lifetime, their earnings, into making a difference, to serve others, and to make our world into a better place. Namaskaram. Good morning and welcome to Vishwa Talks. My name is Radhika. It's a great pleasure to have you all here. For those of you who attend a, attended a Vishwa Talk before, a warm welcome back. And for those of you who are joining us for the first time, here's a little bit about us. Vishwa Talks is a free weekly webinar where experts come to share their insights on wide range of topics. We invite speakers from various fields, including art and culture, healthcare, ecology, education, and more, where we discuss and explore diverse opinions, issues, problems, and perspectives. Each webinar is an interactive session with a deeper understanding of the topic at hand. If you miss any part of the session, and if you would like to go through the previous sessions, please visit our website or Vishwa Talks YouTube channel. 
So today we are honored to introduce our keynote speaker, Mr. Sohail Rekhi. Sohail was born in Mumbai and his parents are renowned actors, Wahida Rahman and Kamal Ji. He grew up in Bangalore and studied in Bangalore and Kodaikanal. He was fascinated by Indian history and he studied literature in college at the University of Toronto. He apprenticed in photography and later worked in an ad film and television industry and worked as freelance journalist. He then manufactured sustainable furniture for many years and he still does that even today. He has written a book called Angria, his very first one, which speaks about India's forgotten hero and it's the result of many years of research and writing. We are all excited to hear about this Indian hero from Sohail today. So before we get started, I would like to inform the audience that our speaker will be taking the questions from you after the main talk. So please leave your questions in the chat box or use raise hand tool and we will allow you to ask your question in person. I request everyone to turn on your webcam for interactive activities. So without further ado, let's give a warm welcome to Mr. Sohail and learn more about this his work and his new book. Over to you, sir. Uh, good morning Spotlight. and uh, good morning. Welcome everyone to Wish Talks. I am Good morning, Rizhi, sir. and it's an absolute pleasure being here and uh, to have this opportunity to talk about uh, Kanhoji Angre. Um, I have uh, been researching Kanhoji Angre for several years now uh, and I have written a novel, Angria, and uh, it's historical fiction, but a lot of research, uh, historical research went into uh, the book. Uh, especially the life and times of the people, uh, the society and culture of that time. Um, I, right from the beginning, I would like to say that I was actually surprised by the fact that I myself, being a student of Indian history, did not know anything about Kanhuji Angre. And uh, the story on how I first heard his name is also quite fascinating. Um, and uh, it made me think, why I did not know of him. I had actually been researching another book on uh, a children's book and uh, I was looking for uh, researching pirates of the western coast of India. And I thought with uh, the amount of trade that was prevalent in the area, they were bound to be pirates. And yes, indeed, there were pirates. Uh, Sangin pirates, uh, Muscatee pirates, Arab pirates, Javanese pirates. Um, but one person who was uh, repeatedly painted as the greatest villain of the age was someone called Konaji Angria by the British. And uh, further research uh, uh, made me realize that this is actually the Subedar of Konkan and uh, the Sarkhel of the uh, Maratha uh, Navy. And he was born to a, in Suvarnadurg to a fort commander uh, Tukuji Sangpal, and he himself first became a fort commander and then went on uh, to become the vice admiral and then the admiral of the uh, uh, Chhatrapati's, uh, the Bhonsle family uh, that was ruling uh, the Swarajya, the independent kingdom Shivaji had created by breaking away from the Sultan of Bijapur. And then he fought the Mughals uh, his entire life and he was able to carve out a kingdom for himself and his descendants. Uh, so uh, when I started doing research on the real Kanhu Jiangre, uh, again, over and over again, he was uh, being portrayed as a pirate. But these were pir primarily by the uh, sources found in England, in Europe, and uh, letters written home, uh, journals and books that people uh, were publishing. It was a great um, uh, literary genre then of people returning from their postings in the East to talk about their experiences uh, for the audience back home in Europe. And uh, Kanhuji Angre, of course, was constantly painted a pirate. Uh, what is sad is that even uh, during a recent panel discussion, uh, one of the panel members uh, at the end of it said, no, but he was a pirate. Uh, maybe his uh, means uh, and uh, uh, 
technology which he was using to uh, fight his uh, opponents could have seemed piratical but it he was not this is one uh, aspect i would really like to make clear first that at no time did he conduct in piracy or what is basically looting uh, at that time the konkan was the the most superior power in the konkan and on the western coast were the portuguese they had massive ships uh, with a lot of cannon and uh, they were much larger and uh, uh, had more artillery than anyone else around and therefore they ruled the entire coast if they needed to subjugate any villages or forts they could uh, bring their broadsides to bear on entire villages or forts and absolutely destroy them so at that time from for around 200 years before kanhuji's birth the portuguese were the dominant power in that area uh, the sultans of bijapur for whom uh, chhatrapati shivaji's father was the senapati was the other great power in uh, the deccan and um, uh, there was also the nascent european uh, trading communities the english the french the dutch and uh, they were here as traders and they had small warehouses um, from where they would collect their goods and then bring them to larger uh, port cities where their ships would carry them back either on to europe or for further trade eastwards and uh, while uh, uh, researching kanu ji angde uh, one can uh, you know see that they he treated every power differently he was well aware of the strength of the portuguese and at some level he did uh, give them that benefit that they have been here and they uh, have control over large swaths of uh, land and uh, mainly the port uh, cities from which uh, all the trade was transacted but um, the situation was not the same with the european traders the european traders had come in from the west uh, merely to trade uh, but after the sack of surat uh, by chhatrapati shivaji uh, they uh, asked the marathas if they could fortify their positions uh, and uh, they were given permission to build walls uh, and uh, that was the limit of their transaction they also had a, a treaty with uh, chhatrapati shivaji uh, which allowed them to trade without paying local custom duties and uh, this actually is the crux of the whole problem uh, with uh, the english and kanoji angde the main antagonists uh, of each other and uh, primarily it was the british who were responsible for painting him a pirate uh, so uh, what had happened is that by the time kanhu ji um, had uh, become the sarkhel he had realized that even though the uh, british did have the east india company had this treaty with uh, the maratha state it only allowed uh, them uh, Uh, to trade without uh, what was called uh, dastak a duty the portuguese had their own uh, uh, duty system it was called the cartas and so a lot of the traders who were trading up and down the coast often paid this duty to several different parties they paid uh, the portuguese they paid uh, the marathas for example if they were dutch traders they would have to pay the portuguese the marathas um, and also there were the abyssinian cities um they were warlords from ethiopia who had been well settled in india for hundreds of years and they were the naval arm of the mughal empire and uh, they represented uh, the mughal uh, uh, effort and state in the konkan uh, the head city was given the title of nawab and was amongst the top luminaries if he were to ever attend court in delhi but uh, uh, konkan was very far not only very far from delhi but very far from their own rulers um, on what was called the desha the deccan plateau in uh, satara kolapur and then later pune under the peshwas um, it is uh, uh, the the distance is not much but there are steep ghats uh, one has to traverse uh, full of wild animals uh, very dense 
to come down to the uh, thin coastal strip that is the konkan but a very important coastal strip a great producer of salt uh, possibly the greatest producer of salt in uh, uh, the peninsula india and um, if you are around places like mumbai whenever you come across something called khare khara it would uh, refer to salt pans that had existed uh, in that period uh, so uh, i started looking into why was he uh, not only why was he painted a pirate but why did i not know about him uh, just to give you a little bit of my background i was born in mumbai and i studied here till the second grade of course we did not have history at that level and uh, then i moved on to bangalore and then uh, uh, tamil nadu but um, the friends of mine who stayed back in mumbai to uh, do their high school uh, they had uh, maybe a paragraph long chapter on kanuji agde and that was uh, the only mention of him um, however i would like to uh, also talk about the fact that what was called the maratha century was also forgotten and not talked about by uh, our historians or we can find any presence of that in our history books uh, post uh, independence and um, it's called the forgotten maratha century because quite frankly after uh, the mughal uh, empire collapsed it was the marathas who ruled in their name after they had beaten the sayed brothers the holkars and the sindhias uh, ruled large swaths of india in their name from atok in uh, the northwest to bengal and uh, down to tanjavur which is uh, still the rajas of tanjavur are from uh, chhatrapati shivaji's family bhosle family and uh, so they had uh, control over large parts of uh, india uh, the reason why uh, the british and later marxist historians have chosen to ignore this is that they, the british wanted to create a certain kind of provenance that uh, they had inherited this empire directly from uh, the mughal emperor and um, the concept of emperorship is very important uh, in india the uh, emperor is called a samrat and when uh, 32 or more kings um, are aligned to one sapra as a emperor and support him he is uh, bestowed that title so um, the mandate at that time came from uh, the moguls um, and they continued uh, issuing these mandates even when the mughal empire as they say did not extend from delhi to palam which was just uh, the city of delhi and where the old airport was it uh, was a very famous saying that now the mughal empire is just from delhi to palam but still they were the people who if you wanted to be made king or uh, had to be uh, given a title or uh, any kind of position the chappa would come from uh, the mughal emperor and of course the marathas uh, supported uh, uh, them uh, as puppets and were of course in charge of the their military and provided protection to um, the moguls right up to the period of the third battle of panipat when you, we can see the marathas fighting in uh, north india against the afghans uh, who were trying to uh, take over india uh, so that is uh, uh, the milieu in which uh, uh, kanhoji existed and uh, the peshwas themselves were very successful Uh, but there was dissension everywhere and uh, we have in losing uh, the maratha century absolutely forgotten their sardars people like kanhu ji angre kanhu ji angre was an extremely successful uh, sardar uh, commander and uh, he has remained unbeaten there were many times when the portuguese the british and the sidhis uh, ganged up on him they formed an alliance to attack him uh, jointly and they were beaten he uh, was able to uh, develop new naval tactics that uh, rendered the size and the artillery of the portuguese galleons meaningless 
uh, he would uh, form a uh, row, uh, basically create a revolver made out of his Galbat boats, small uh, rowboats, which he had uh, cannons in the prow, and they would follow these large galleons and shoot their masts and sails off, uh, blow their rudder away, and then board them in literally in the thousands. Entire villages would climb up onto the ships and uh, take them over. Uh, of course, he was constantly at war with the Portuguese. This is not something he denied. He always uh, said that he has he is not only at war with the Portuguese and his intention is to uh, remove their power from uh, the Konkan, but he was also constantly at war with the uh, Siddhis. Uh, of course, the Siddhis were divided between 12 Mahals there were people he supported, there were uh, people he fought against, but one of his dreams was to take over the Mahal of Janjira, uh, which was uh, the one of the largest city uh, states and uh, uh, forts, and it had never been taken since uh, the cities had acquired it. He was very keen to get rid of this. Uh, of course, everyone else had to pay a dastak to him, uh, and... Uh, these were the other traders and whether they were of European of, or Indian origin. Even Indian origin traders, whether they were in from Surat or further south, had to pay this customs duty. And this is uh, a system that was followed all through India. Um, uh, the payment of custom duties on goods uh, traversing through your land. And um, the problem with the British was that the British were using their free pass, which they had been given by Chhatrapati Shivaji, to uh, further sell that pass. So they would charge local merchants a fee and uh, hoist the company, uh, East India Company flag, and uh, uh, give them free transport. However, they were making money uh, off the Maratha back. And this is something that uh, Kanuji Angade did not uh, allow. And his uh, problem with the British was this, that uh, they were basically passing off uh, the uh, passport, the uh, custom passport they had got from Chhatrapati Shivaji to uh, any and all other traders, whether they be the Dutch, if they were okay with them at that point. You know, things kept changing. Uh, there, were, uh, there was wars back in Europe that had a reflection of what was happening uh, in this pre-colonial stage. Uh, but there was also dissensions amongst the Mughals. There were dissensions amongst the Siddhis. There were uh, two East India companies at the least. You know, even within the East India Company, one thinks it is one uh, entity. No, there were uh, uh, issues between shareholders back uh, at Leiden Hall Street in London. And that was reflected uh, in Surat, in uh, uh, Bengal and in uh, the Konkan. Uh, so uh, this is uh, the basic background. And when I realized that even a student of history like me uh, could be fooled into uh, believing he was a pirate, I thought that I needed to create a narrative uh, that would in some way, uh, you know, oppose all the several other narratives that were uh, available at the time. Um, I'm sure all of you have seen the very popular or may have heard of the extremely popular Johnny Depp movie, Pirates of the Caribbean. In uh, The World's End, which was uh, released in 1997, there is an Indian pirate and uh, he is called Sambhaji. And Sambhaji was the second son of uh, Kanhuji Angde. So I'm sure Disney did do its research, um, not as uh, deeply as I have, but they were making a fun fictional movie. Uh, what I'm trying to get at is that within, uh, this is the gentleman, that within uh, popular culture, the Angriyas, even in the 20th century, were seen as pirates. And uh, because of uh, the several uh, texts that existed, uh, texts within the Royal Museum in Greenwich uh, or the Warwick Staffordshire Journal, uh, the Bombay Gazetteer, um, also uh, East India uh, Company Journal, 
maintained that he was a pirate. There is even a video game called Pirate's Realm in which uh, the Indian pirate is uh, called uh, Karnoji Angre, Konaji, an uh, anglicization of his uh, uh, Marathi name. Uh, and uh, uh, it is quite sad. So I wanted to redress that issue very clearly. Um, <clears throat> now, uh, going into uh, research of uh, Kanoji, we realized that uh, not only was he uh, a very successful uh, naval commander, but he was also a very good uh, protector and he was able to allow a lot of trade to go on in peace. Uh, he could have cut off the Europeans at any point, but he realized he also needed good quality silver, gold, and uh, guns and cannons uh, from the European traders. He tried to manufacture a lot of these himself, uh, well aware that uh, in Vijayanagar we had an uh, amazing metallurgical past, and he tried to get uh, metallurgists, uh, uh, smiths from uh, South India, uh, to work for him. Uh, but by that time, with the European uh, uh, technology in cannons had far superseded us. However, at that time, we were the largest producer of saltpeter, which is a very important ingredient in gunpowder. So uh, having a monopoly on uh, saltpeter, uh, he started manufacturing gunpowder and he wished to trade that with uh, uh, either the British or the French or the Portuguese uh, in exchange for guns and cannons. Um, and uh, so he continued on very uh, successfully. His revenue at that time was uh, towards the end of his life uh, around uh, 32 lakhs a year, uh, which is quite a phenomenal sum. And uh, the dates of his life are 1669, uh, 67, 69 to 1729, you know, so just at uh, the start of the 18th century. Um, at that time, even the house of Bhusle was split between Kolapur and Satara. So there was, uh, at every level, there was, uh, uh, there was dissension amongst all the people who were... Uh, around uh, in that uh, time. You know, India was known as the Son Chidiya. It was uh, one of the, basically the three largest economies of the world. And it had been so for literally thousands of years. It was always uh, India or what you can call, uh, you know, the Desha, the subcontinent, China and Persia. Uh, these three, um, well, there were no nations, but these empires, they were called the, gunpowder empires because they relied on muskets uh, and gunpowder uh, to fight their battles. They had among, uh, between the three of them, 80% of the world's GDP. You know, the rest of the world was 20%. So everyone had to come east, uh, whether they wanted cotton or silk or uh, uh, medicines or spices, uh, any kind of uh, uh, producible good was produced uh, in these areas. And uh, so the whole world was coming to us. And when there is so much, one tends to fight over it. So even the company fought amongst themselves, the Muslims fought amongst themselves. Of course, the Mughals did, and uh, then they perished. And that, of course, was something that uh, Chhatrapati Shivaji Maharaj had initiated. Uh, Aurangzeb had been very keen that uh, Shivaji Maharaj take over the, uh, you know, uh, join him actually. He was very keen that he join him. But uh, Shivaji Maharaj was very keen on being an independent uh, kingdom. And later on, of course, the Peshwas, they became uh, the Sardeshmuks uh, of the Deccan and they took uh, the Chaut which was one-fourth of uh, revenue uh, for uh, taking, uh, providing security uh, in the Deccan. And uh, this was the background. And uh, now we can uh, move on to 
a little bit about the book. Uh, though it is uh, uh, based uh, on Kanu Ji Angre, I've had to rely on my imagination and uh, uh, sometimes have composites of characters uh, to create something that is interesting. But I have tried to maintain, uh, you know, uh, total veracity when it comes to battles fought, how they were fought, uh, the, the times he was attacked. Uh, and it is uh, true that once they were unable to, uh, once they were unable to dislodge him, they did attack him during his daughter's wedding, well knowing, knowing that it is, uh, he's celebrating it with his people. Uh, they would, uh, you know, um, attack him during religious festivals, knowing that they are doing, for example, during Nariel Pukurima, which is a very important festival here in the Konkan. And uh, they did try their damnedest, but they were unable to beat him in his uh, lifetime. Uh, then governors of uh, Bombay, pres it was not a presidency then, but the little fort and uh, port town of uh, Bombay, uh, people like Charles Boone, uh, in his lifetime started painting him a pirate so that uh, the head office in London uh, could finance his Bombay Marine. What we know of the Indian Navy actually, uh, ironically, was started as a response to Kanu Angre, the Bombay Marine. And uh, he petitioned London to give him uh, finances to build a naval uh, squadron uh, locally. Earlier on, they would come in from uh, Britain. Uh, commanders were sent in. But uh, he wanted a local marine uh, outfit uh, for protection of the trade. And this later grew into uh, uh, the Indian Navy. However, the Western Command uh, in uh, Mumbai, uh, Western Navy, Naval Command, it's a, uh, what is known as a dry frigate, is called very gladly, you know, and thankfully, INS Angre. And I think that's a tip of the hat to uh, our realization of how important he was to uh, our naval efforts and at being able to uh, basically delay the British uh, uh, successes in India. In the years of his lifetime, they were absolutely unable to make a dent. And then his two elder sons, Sekhoji and Sambaji, were also able to uh, control uh, the Konkan for the Angriyas. It's only after the passing of the two elder brothers, there was dissension not only amongst uh, the brothers, the younger brothers, Angre brothers, but also between uh, the Kolapur and Satara problem had gotten worse. And now there was a third player in uh, Maratha history, which were the Peshwas. And uh, though they had started off as uh, the prime ministers to the Chhatrapati, they were now their own. Uh, uh, they were their own uh, power center. Of course. Uh, uh, one must uh, not forget that initially the very thought of having a navy was initiated by uh, Chhatrapati Shivaji Maharaj. And uh, he had the Darya Sarang and even some Abyssinian warlords with him. And he created the first uh, naval effort uh, within the subcontinent, of course, excluding the Cholas um, uh, who preceded him. But uh, he used uh, naval tactics very successfully. Unfortunately, after his passing, it had gone into decline. And uh, then the Marathas, the Husleys and the Peshwas tended to ignore the Konkan uh, for the political games that were happening in India. Because they rightfully realized that whoever has uh, uh, more power in Delhi is going to have more uh, power deciding, you know, the destiny of the entire subcontinent. So Delhi has always remained uh, important. Uh, unfortunately, I think in our textbooks, too important where we forget the um, uh, smaller stories in the outlying parts of India, whether they be the Konkan or Bengal or Kerala. 
And I think uh, we really need to focus a bit more on that to see why the center was important. It's because the periphery was doing so well and was successful and was so rich. And uh, these were on reports to all the trade that was coming in and out of India and making it such a wealthy nation. Uh, and uh, now we can possibly, uh, let me just check my time. I have a few minutes uh, more. Uh, is there anything else we can? Uh, I'm just very happy that uh, in the government of India, at least, has recognized uh, the importance of uh, Kanho Jiangre. And uh, we do find there used to be a cruise ship. Uh, earlier on, it was only that cruise ship, Mumbai, Goa cruise ship that was called Angria. Uh, now, of course, off Sindhu Durg, 100 kilometers, there's a coral bank, which is called the Angria Bank. INS Angre, we have some lighthouses. Uh, but I am really hoping that uh, every Indian student of history, every Indian gets to know about someone like Anuji Angre. Uh, he was so successful in his lifetime. He was a practical, reasonable man, a cosmopolitan man. After, his, uh, after he was attacked during Nariel Purnima, he made sure that either uh, he had uh, Muslim or uh, what were called Topashi, Indo-Portuguese uh, Christian soldiers uh, amongst his garrison so that if they went away for their festivals, uh, someone else was there. And if uh, his Maratha uh, and Koli uh, uh, people garrison went away, there was someone always guarding uh, his forts and uh, providing security to the trade that was going on. Uh, he became so wealthy that he had to mint his own coins. And this is the Ali Bagi Rupaya, which was minted in silver. He got um, uh, uh, people from uh, the former state of Bijapur to help him with this. And uh, though it is uh, uh, on one side, it is written in Urdu and in, in Persian, sorry. And on the other, it is in uh, uh, Marathi. Uh, it says Shri. And uh, his seal was also, this is Gopalgarh, and uh, these are his forts. Uh, they were usually built on promontories, and uh, they were able to view all the trade that was passing through, and uh, they could also uh, provide uh, cannon fire, uh, you know. So if someone was being chased, they would tend to come and seek refuge. Uh, you know, under the cannon fire of these forts. Of course, a lot of people would try to escape these cartas, go out into the sea and get attacked by the real pirates. And we did have pirates from uh, Muscat uh, and uh, further up north in Gujarat. Javanese were also uh, roving this area. And even uh, by that time, European uh, pirates had come in. So uh, there is a very famous incident of uh, the pirate Avery uh, taking uh, Aurangzeb's ship. That one ship was worth 52 lakhs at that point, which was worth more than the East India Company. And uh, Avery, of course, uh, is supposed to have escaped to Madagascar, but he was never caught. But uh, 52 lakhs at that time was indeed an emperor's ransom. And uh, so, yes, there were pirates at that time, but Kanuji Angre definitely was not. Uh, he was given the Suba of uh, Konkan, and uh, he was given increased Watan lands, which his ancestors uh, hold on to this day. His family is still in existence in uh, Golia and in uh, the Konkan in Alibag. Raguji Raji Angre, a uh, gentleman I met who really helped me with my research. He is still there. Tulaji Angre, named after his ancestor, uh, is in Golia with his family, descendants of the CS Angre branch. And um, uh, we are very glad to have a great Indian hero at that time because we have been fed this narrative that we were a primitive people and it was obvious that the British... And the
Sir, can you unmute yourself? You know, successful people, and uh, it's just that we got outplayed by, you know, thuggish people like Clive who learned our system and were able to just uh, be more ruthless than uh, we could have ever been. And uh, that is where this is Sagar uh, Gadh Fort, which is on the Ghats. And uh, anyone coming down the Ghats, uh, Kanuji Angade would have uh, foreknowledge of it. There was a time when uh, he actually marched on uh, Satara and the British used this to say, oh, he does he even attacks his own supposed masters. But that was just a, a, a ploy. Uh, he was hoping to sort out the situation and become the Sir Kale. It was something he really wanted. It was a duty he was uh, uh, following and he just wanted the recognition which he was eventually given by Shahu Maharaj. Who was the Chhatrapati then, and he served under both uh, uh, three uh, Sambaji Maharaj, uh, Rajaji Maharaj, and Shahu Maharaj. This is the famous Suvarnadar Fort where Kanuji was born, and uh, this is a very famous fort where uh, Chhatrapati Shivaji Maharaj had uh, has a flag post. He had. Uh, put his Bhagwa pennant up here in his own lifetime. And uh, so these uh, uh, images are just to show you the kind of uh, geography and topography of the place. Uh, this is another uh, image of Subarna Dhul Fort. I, I just hope the Archaeological Society of India, um, you know, uh, this, this is the fall of, this is Vijay Dhul Fort, his most important fort. This was attacked in 1756 by Clive. And uh, Clive and the Peshwas uh, jointly attacked uh, uh, Tulaji Angre uh, with the uh, assistance of his brother Manaji Angre. And that was the fall of the house of uh, Angre uh, as a great power. Of course, they still continue to exist at a letter, lesser capacity. Uh, but uh, at one point, they were the single most important, powerful, and richest family in all of the Konkan and the true rulers of uh, the Konkan. Uh, I just uh, really hope that our government uh, and our archaeological society uh, looks into the upkeep of these forts. Uh, Kanuji Angre had built a fort every 30 kilometers, 30 kilometers being the distance he could see his people could see through an eyeglass uh, telescope of the day. Um, and uh, so he had eyes on the entire coast. You know, they would say nothing flew or fish swam without him being privy to it. He had a system of spies everywhere working for the European traders in uh, Satara, uh, absolutely everywhere using very more, uh, modern techniques of warfare, of intelligence gathering, uh, and uh, a very practical man. You know, he never tried to throw uh, anyone out. He tried to keep a balance so that people would bring in uh, trade. But he was very clear on the fact that the Europeans must uh, adhere to our norms and realize that this is not some undiscovered land. It is uh, heavily peopled. It has structures of uh, government and power which uh, need to be adhered to. And while he was alive, there was absolutely no problem. Um, had he lived longer or his sons lived longer, maybe uh, you know our entire history would have been different. Uh, but these are just uh, presumptions. This is a painting of by a British uh, artist of the Battle of Gheria in Vijaydul and the fall of Vijaydul. And uh, basically, this presages the colonial period. It is, uh, I think, even before the Battle of Plassey, it is the Battle of Gheria in 1756 that uh, uh, ended, uh, you know, the death knell of... Uh, you know, our uh, independence for 
many years. And then, of course, the British used a system of collaboration, uh, one against the other, continuously to take over large swaths of uh, the subcontinent. And uh, I hope you all have enjoyed this presentation and uh, looking forward to any questions you may have. Thank you, sir. Thank you for giving a wonderful insight on Kanoji Angre and the Marathas. So before we move on to question and answer session, I would request the audience to take 30 seconds to answer a poll. The purpose of the poll is to help us understand you a little better. So we can better curate the topics that we bring to you. You can also let us know in the chat box how you found out about the Vishwa Talks. If you are a Vishwatalk subscriber, heard about it through friends or family, or found about it even on social media. I would like to express my gratitude to everybody who has joined us today for their presence and interactive contribution to making this webinar a success. I extend my gratitude uh, to our speaker, Mr. Sohil Reiki, for taking your time you. to grace the event. And I request all the I thank all the participants and our Vishwatalks team. So our founder, Ms. Srivani Mullapudi, will uh, take the Q&A. Over to you, ma'am. Namaste. Sohilji, thank you so much for coming on Vishwa Talks and uh, presenting such a wonderful topic. Thank you, Srivani ji. Thank you. I wanted to ask you, are the uh, books in Maharashtra, the school books, do they cover uh, uh, Kanuji Angreji's uh, about him? Very briefly, madam. Unfortunately, very brief. It is not even a paragraph. And uh, of course, you know, there is, um, uh, insert is redoing our books. And I don't think it is uh, a bad exercise because we need to constantly be aware of uh, new research, new attitudes and um, uh, bring them up for our students, you know. And I think our history is a bit too Delhi heavy, too Mughal heavy, whereas, you know, it is so varied uh, that we do need to focus on other, uh, 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 you know, people. People in Maharashtra should know about people in Tamil Nadu or uh, Telangana and Andhra Pradesh or Bengal and vice versa. I think the only way we can have some national cohesion is if we know each other's heroes. Uh, unfortunately, in Kanoji Angre's case, even there's very little. He's just mentioned in passing that there used to be so and so person, but uh, very uh, not detailed. Unfortunately, it's it's wonderful that you have done research on such an important topic at a time when the country is realizing that. Our national heroes have not give, been given their due importance. For you to put in that effort and do research and bring this topic on to Vishwa Talk so that people in the country are made aware of such local heroes is, is a commendable thing that you're doing. Thank you, ma'am. Thank you. I think uh, well, what happens is that uh, the British did not want us to know that we could be so successful. You know, I think you want to hide the success stories. And, uh, uh, you know, uh, that is the problem. That, that's something we need to fight. So, so I heard that the Mar when did the Mughals become weak? In which uh, years did the Mughals be become weak? When did the Marathas take over? And I understand the Britishers have actually taken over the country from the Marathas and not the Mughals. So can you give us a little light on that? Yes, so uh, basically uh, the Mughals started, uh, the Mughals uh, collapsed after the death of Aurangzeb. Uh, Aurangzeb was, uh, you know, a very conservative, bigoted uh, ruler, but powerful uh, militarily. But his policies had already started causing problems in the Punjab. And of course, uh, Shivaji Maharaj, whose father was uh, part of, he was able, um, Aurangzeb was able to crush Bijapur and Golconda. But um, he thought, you know, once he's done this, he's got a free reign all the way down south. But up pops, uh, up, uh, out pops Shivaji. And uh, Shivaji just did not let this happen. And uh, Aurangzeb died in 1707. And that 
is the end of the Mughal Empire, a rather a powerful Mughal Empire. It uh, collapsed after that because none of his sons, and of course the Mughals have this concept, you know, the sons would fight to death. It was, you know, it was the coffin or the throne. So they would, uh, a civil war would break out every single time. Um, we can hear you. One of the emperors would uh, fall. And uh, 1707 was the end of a powerful Mughal empire. And in, in literally, uh, Plassey was 1757. So in the next 50 years, end of story. And the British had uh, become quite a powerful uh, player in India. Can you give us a little distinction about the Battle of Geria in 1756 and the Battle of Plassey in 1757 and how this was a turning point for the Britishers? Uh, yes, the Battle of uh, Plassey, again, the British uh, uh, allied with uh, the Peshwa and with uh, Manaji Angre and attacked uh, Tulaji Angre and uh, destroyed uh, Gheria and the entire Angrian fleet. I think it was, you know, uh, Clive's realization that they have no, you know, India, uh, even now, caste system is very important. And uh, not anyone can become a ruler. One needs to be from the right caste, uh, you know, from the Kshatriya caste and be a Jagirdar, basically a land owner uh, or from that aristocracy because only that caste is allowed to own uh, land. Of course, uh, uh, the Peshwas were Brahmins, but uh, one had to be a land owner. And um, I think Clive realized that as traders, they, have, they cannot make inroads. They needed to... Um, I think his experience in uh, the Konkan taught him that what he needs to do is become a Jagirdar. And once he was able to become uh, uh, make the company a Jagirdar after the uh, Battle of Plassey, then there was no looking back for the British. You know, they were one of the many Jagirdars uh, and Rajwadas then uh, that started competing uh, towards the uh, primacy in Delhi of the throne. Uh, there is a question from uh, Mr. Shmel Yerushalmi. Please unmute yourself. Uh, thank you. You hear me? Okay. Very no. interesting. Uh, very interesting uh, presentation. Uh, I very enjoyed uh, from uh, this uh, presentation. And uh, I want uh, to ask you next uh, question. How according uh, to you, uh, the story of uh, Kanochi can support uh, uh, education, uh, sup can support uh, improvement uh, education of young uh, generation? Uh, sorry, of young? I'll repeat that. Y young uh, by, generation. By sharing generation. the story of uh, Kanoji Angde, how could, what is the impact we can have on the younger generation by sharing it in schools? Well, I, you know, I think um, uh, being aware, of, so we are fighting this, this narrative that uh, we were taken over by European past because we were in any way primitive, you know, or, or incapable. And that is just not true because we see many examples uh, in pre-colonial India of our extreme success and the fact that we were the, uh, amongst the third largest economies and uh, militarily also uh, very competent. Uh, you know, so I uh, there is a, over the years, it's taken on a racial tint and it's something I just want to remind ourselves of that this is not true. So, uh, Shumen, uh, what I would like to say is in India, uh, when the Britishers left, they ensured that they killed the Indian education system, the Gurukul system. And even the, some of the leaders of that time were very influenced by the Western thought. And a lot of Western concepts and Western concepts about culture, about values, about success has been thrown on the Indian psyche, which has had a major impact in disintegrating our family systems, leading to major problems. So now there is 
a slight realization that our history books have not been changed for 70 years after independence. Our local heroes are not recognized. So it is a great, a commendable uh, work that Sohelji has done, where he's bringing out a local Navy commander on who has laid the foundation for the Indian Navy in uh, Mumbai. Could you talk a little bit about uh, his impact on the Indian Navy in Mumbai, please, uh, Sohelji? Uh, definitely. You know, there was a, a great increase in shipbuilding. So uh, there were shipwrights got from all over, all parts of uh, India, primarily the western regions, Gujarat and Kerala. And uh, they were concentrated in this area. There were dry docks built. Uh, there was uh, dredging of uh, ports, canals. So uh, there was a lot of uh, maritime trade and maritime uh, transportation at that time. I would say there was more then than what we see now in Mumbai. You know, now we have just uh, started a roll off Rono uh, ferry to Mandwa and this and that. But uh, uh, it is uh, still negligible. Uh, given what we had at that time, every inlet was used. You know, uh, uh, all these rivers flow down to the coast and uh, uh, cargo was uh, uh, flown, uh, taken down the rivers and they would uh, come to these large ports and th then they were further traded. Uh, so uh, we were using a lot more marine technology then, I think. Uh, of course, it is much better now. We have Coast Guard and everything. But we need to, again, uh, you know, go back to that period, at least from a, a private point of view. And, of course, militarily, uh, you know, we have established these areas uh, as uh, important uh, sites, uh, you know, and the, just uh, uh, the technology of shipbuilding, uh, that also changed. Earlier on, we would tie our wooden, wooden uh, pieces together with a, Rope. But once we started putting cannon on the decks, then we had to cork it and, uh, you know, the technology changed. We would borrow from the best as, you know, everyone constantly does. You come across a technology that is better than yours, you immediately absorb it. And Kanuji Angri was very good at doing that, absorbing the best technology available. Yes. So Indians have been in the last 70 years told that we are inferior and our naval, uh, uh, the presence of na naval in, in of India across the world has been uh, removed from uh, history books, either the Cholas or on this on this front between the Gujarat, Puch, uh, uh, Bombay, Kerala. So much of trade took place over over uh, thousands of centuries, but none of it was actually shown in our books to our younger generation. The pride, the identity that should be given to our children has not been given. I think that is the impact it has had. Yeah, we have another question. Mr. Sivshankar Babu, can you unmute yourself? Uh, can, yeah, yes, please. Hello? Yes. Hello, sir. Namaste. Hi. Good yes, morning. This is Dr. Murthy here. I'm just driving. I'm just uh... Let me park. Okay, I will give you a minute. Park and make a call. No, 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 no. That's all. That's all. I'm till now. Yeah. I have been listening to this wonderful recap on Ganaji Angre. He is one of my favorite heroes. Uh, uh, my name is Shivashankar Babu. I'm coming from Tamil Heritage Trust, Chennai. Uh, yes. Yeah. We Hello. also recently conducted one um, ten-day seminar on um, uh, India's ancient to contemporary sea trade routes, all the seaports and other things. And then in, in that, when it comes to Maharashtra ports, Kanaji was extensively covered. And uh, for Tamilians, Kanaji is a local hero, primarily because of the 60s, there was one story writer. Uh, he is a fiction story writer, but around 50% of his content is historical, proper historical. He has written a thousand page, two volume novel on Kanoji Angre. 
okay that is called jalatipam and where the lieutenant from tamil nadu will be working under kanoji learning the trade primarily he will be bringing the rajaram's child from uh, chenji and trying to make make it legitimate and get his share of rule so right. kanoji is quite popular and well known in tamil nadu primarily because of him he is an excellent writer he has written another phenomenal naval warfare and novel three com three three parts around 1500 which is called kadalpura again this kadalpura jaladeepam are the names of his capital ships so excellent this the kadalpura is based on rajendra chola's visit to Jarvan Sumitra and Indonesia to uh, subject the case for the Deepa. Okay. Oh, so, this is very fascinating. I had not yes. even heard of it. And I'm yes. so glad you brought this up. I would very much, uh, you know, look into this. Because even though my book is finished, my obsession with the man is not. And, you know, I'm really keen that, uh, yeah, so that me, I hope there will be... Uh, I'll some... connect with you. I'll connect with you and share you some more details regarding sure, this. Sir. Really and also, uh, regarding Kanoji, earlier he was working as a, 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 there is an independent person. And later on, on uh, a truce with Sahu, and he, he formally becomes a Sarkel of uh, Maharashtra Empire. Okay. Right. okay he, was, he was not a traditional Sarkel. He was the pirate. he proved his metal and and, and uh, like he was collecting uh, dust from everybody and then being a non non maharashtra government person he can only refuse his just passport means he was collecting from british also the dust and everything he doesn't care who is that the dust can go that that is how he was fighting with uh, sindhi sindhi and others so all this is is graphically represented in that book beautifully written a nice mix of fiction and passion and definitely unfortunately there is no english translation available otherwise it would have been a great one mm-hmm. so definitely i am looking forward to your book on uh, similar lines and then uh, definitely lot of local heroes like this who have beaten british in their own game are there in tamil nadu karnataka like kunjani uh, markangiri in kerala right their stories are not not at all related only now the kunjani markangiri story is there as a malayalam movie big gross grosser starred by mohan lal so right so these things should come uh, not as the fiction triggers and and uh, the books should reach them into the limelight and get more facts and from from the aspect you done a phenomenal job by, by the descriptions you have given uh, great work and all the best please share your contact details through email i think uh, uh, the organizers have my details and we can connect and we can uh, discuss on this a little later the roman nandri sir i will definitely do that i will do that i am very looking forward to it thank you sir thank you uh, sorry sir. i am i am uh, driving so i am not able to uh, ping much i will just share my email id here sure okay. thank, thank you thank you um there's been a lot of connection between the marathas and uh, the south in okay. fact they have supported um when a lot of temples were being destroyed would you right. say a line or two about that about tanjore or what they how the marathas have contributed to the south would you be able to um, um, who are yeah, you asking mr shiv shankar babu aaj yeah see when initially uh, nayakas vijayanagara was there at the scattering of the vijayanagaras the Nayak has become independent. Tanjur was ruled by a Nayak. 
and at that time maratha was spreading his wings and then slowly reaching up to south india tamil nadu and certain parts okay one of the similar heroes mantri rao who is a horseman who who heads the maratha light infantry division he is also a similar person like uh, ganoji angre he was doing uh the lemon collection from south indian states from arkan uh, the way up to tanjavur slowly then uh, the rule of nayakas was not good and uh, they asked for maratha to intervene so a bunch of maratha came in they removed the nayakas but instead of restoring property marathas to power and then they were okay with it that is how maratha rule continued for such a long time even in tanjavur big temple the trustee is maratha rajdara okay all right okay right. and then maratha branch initially in 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 india in uh, tanjavur initially they have fought with british clive in delhi kote there was a major war in delhi kote britishers lost the war in first time but by the second time rudrapur the, the last maratha uh, king in tanjavur he made truce with the british so that at that time tamil nadu was a fight between british and french so he decided to get aligned with the british so that is how slowly the british uh, took over the maratas and the cross the branch in tanjavur that is an interesting story also thank <laughs> you thanks for the opportunity <laughs> okay, yeah thanks. uh mr colonel professor dr n n thir please yes this uh, i would like to ask a question the maratha empire which ruled major part of uh, today's india that belongs to shivaji or the peshwas are different so it was actually the maratha confederacy so there were uh, uh, different sardars of the chhatrapatis of which one was peshwa uh, the prime of all his sardars the chief sardar but there were also the holkars the gaikwads the sindhias you know the uh, sindhias uh, uh, ruled uh, madhya pradesh the yeah. gaikwad were in gujarat the holkars were in madhya pradesh in the central provinces basically uh, so it was a uh, maratha confederacy you know uh, uh, what uh, shivaji maharaj's family was able to do was to unite these uh, uh, different families uh and um, uh, and it was not just marathas you know there there are no lines literally there were there was people from eastern uh, uh, part of the central province there were people from telangana there were people from everyone in that army and of course the lead was taken by these very successful uh, maratha sardars which were part of what is called the maratha confederacy No, but but my question is the maratha empire which is we see so many maps that is originated from shivaji or the peshwas peshwa was one among the confederacy there were a group of people who uh, mm. promoted the maratha empire and one of them one of the of the when you um, add the holkars and the sindhias peshwas was one among the team okay but then then this shiva the, the empire originated from shivaji only we can say not necessarily yes sir you, you uh, so it can uh, definitely the origin was there otherwise there would have been no empire they would have been the tax collector collectors of butpi japur or the mughals but he uh, chhatrapati shivaji maharaj was very clear about creating uh, uh, his own identity being his own man so uh, he could have uh, not rocked the boat after all his father was the sinapati of the bijapuri sultans his father was very keen that he work for them bijapur was keen that he work for them aurangzeb was keen that he work for them but he carved out his own kingdom 
<laughs> also, sir, there was a question. Uh, Aurangzeb had reintroduced the jizya tax, you know, which was uh, uh, was now clear. The imposition of that tax basically means that uh, you are in a foreign country, and the, these people who you are taxing are a kind of foreigners, right? Uh, they are not part of your system. Uh, the earlier Mughals were not taxing any Indian. And uh, this uh, did, rubbed everyone the wrong way because they're the uh, their in-laws are the Rajputs. The Rajputs and the Kayas were integral in uh, Mughal domination of India. Uh, so uh, Shivaji Maharaj was very particular that he wanted to create his own Swarajya, as he called at that time. So Jizya was started only by Aurangzeb and not the other Mughals? Uh, they were, it was a pre-Mughal tax system. And I think it was removed by Akbar. Okay. Got it. Yeah. Mr. Venkatesh and Ramaswamy, could you ask your question? Yes, ma'am. See, I am from Tamil Nadu, Coimbatore. In my school days, I read uh, uh, that uh, she asked Mr. Uh, Babu told, no, that uh, book uh, written by uh, one famous uh, historical author like uh, Chandilian. He clearly described that uh, the, the story of uh, Kano Jangri very much. So once I saw this, uh, your uh, thing, no, immediately I jump in, jumped into it and uh, registered for this. And if possible that if the book is made available to other uh, all other uh, people, then it will be very good because he has uh, thoroughly researched and uh, done that uh, thing. So I'm very much impressed with this uh, seminar and uh, I'm so happy to hear more uh, things like that in future. We really look forward to our uh, uh, very happy to hear what you said and we really look forward for more people to come on Vishwa Talks and talk about local heroes. Yeah, thank sure. you, Soelji. It was a wonderful talk. You have uh, given us this opportunity to present Kanoji Angde to the public. Thank you, Shivani ji, for this opportunity and platform. I think, you know, uh, this needs to go to all uh, parts of India, not just uh, Maharashtra. And now this is such a beautiful vehicle to do that. Yeah, I'll uh, uh, now close this session. Before I close, I'll talk about the upcoming talks. Uh, we have one talk, um, how to adopt a nature-friendly lifestyle, why nature matters, the impact of eco-friendly cleaning on health and environment by Mr. Ramachandra Garu. All of us want, all of us are using chemicals while cleaning our floors, cleaning our clothes, but we're not aware, some of us are not aware of the impact it has on the soil around us. So Mr. Ram Kundragaru will share with us on uh, what kind of alternative eco-cleaning materials we can use so that our health and the environment is protected. We have another topic, Future of Electrical Vehicles in India by Madha Varpi Reddy, founder and uh, CEO. Elect uh, as you all know, slowly the electrical uh, vehicles are coming into the picture. This is on February 24, 2024, 11 a.m. Please do join us. With this, I would like to thank all the participants to <coughs> talk a success and to Vishwa Talks team for making this talk uh, available to all in such a seamless fashion. Thank you so much. Thank you. Thank you. Please join in the breakout room. Hello, sir. Hello, sir.
Doina, ya ben. 